Protein is an essential macronutrient, and the reason for that is some amino acids are also essential in our diet. In this video, we're going to talk about both the synthesis and the breakdown of amino acids. In contrast to carbohydrates and proteins, amino acid synthesis and amino acid breakdown is much more complicated because each of the 20 amino acids has a different pathway for synthesis and a different pathway for breakdown. In this video, we're going to talk about some of the differences between them. We're going to describe exactly why certain amino acids are essential, while other ones are either conditionally essential or entirely dispensable. We're then going to differentiate between these different classifications, and I'll give you some handy mnemonics to separate them. Then we're going to talk about what the individual requirements are for each individual amino acid, how they vary, and what they look like in context with total protein requirements. There's 10 essential amino acids, or maybe 9. I'll come back to that in a second. Shown here are the 10 essential amino acids for children and for infants. You can see this is a mnemonic that's based on the first letter in each amino acid's name. This is quite helpful if you're trying to remember, for example, if tryptophan is an essential amino acid. It's one of the two T's. Shown here on the right is arginine. Arginine is an essential amino acid, but only for infants. It's not an essential amino acid for adults. So you can either go private Tim Hall or private Tim Hull, depending on which you prefer. Why are certain amino acids essential, and other amino acids are totally dispensable? Shown here is the biosynthesis for all amino acids, for example, in a plant. Now, plants can make all 20 amino acids. Plants don't have the option of going to the store and buying more leucine because they're running short. They're stuck in the ground. They have to make do with what's around them. You can see some of these pathways are quite straightforward, and some of these pathways are quite complicated. Highlighted here are the essential amino acids. What you might notice is the essential amino acids tend to have multi-step complicated biosynthetic pathways. As humans have evolved, because so many amino acids were available within our diets, we've dispensed with some of these very complicated biochemical pathways. It tends to be that the essential amino acids with the more complicated biochemistry are the pathways we've not bothered to keep through evolution. We now don't need to make all those enzymes, and we don't need to worry about regulating them. Highlighted here are the dispensable amino acids. In contrast to the essential amino acids, you can see that many of their biochemical pathways are quite straightforward. For example, if you look at alanine, shown here, it is synthesized in a one-step reaction from pyruvate. Very straightforward. It only requires one enzyme, and it requires a precursor, pyruvate, which is quite common. This is the basis by which certain amino acids, as we've evolved, we've not evolved the ability to keep making them. Because in general, it was easier to get from our diet than to rely on our own biosynthetic machinery. Some amino acids require another amino acid for their synthesis. For example, tyrosine is synthesized from its precursor molecule, phenylalanine. That makes tyrosine conditionally essential. It's dependent on whether or not you have enough phenylalanine and whether or not you have the ability to convert phenylalanine to tyrosine. This is true for several other amino acids. Glutamate can be converted into several amino acids, including proline, arginine, and glutamine. Asparagine can be made from aspartate, again, with a one-step, very straightforward reaction. Here's an example here. As you can see, glutamate, which is a dispensable amino acid, is required for the synthesis of both proline and glutamine. As long as you have glutamate, and as long as you have the enzymes that can convert glutamate into either proline or glutamine, now all of them are dispensable. That's about the biosynthesis of the amino acids. But what happens when we break them down? Remember, amino acids are not only used to make proteins. They're also used for energy. And as we use them for energy, we need to break them down into catabolic products. In general, amino acids can be broken down into things that can become glucose, the glucogenic amino acids, and things that can become acetyl-CoA, and then eventually either a ketone body or a fatty acid. These are the ketogenic amino acids. Leucine and lysine are exclusively ketogenic amino acids. Tyrosine, phenylalanine, isoleucine, and tryptophan are all both glucogenic and ketogenic. Generally, that's because they're broken down into two pieces. One piece can become glucose, and the other piece can become acetyl-CoA, and then eventually a ketone body. The mnemonic I use to remember this is FLIT. Phenylalanine, leucine, lysine, isoleucine, tryptophan, and threonine are the glucogenic and ketogenic amino acids, with the two L's, leucine and lysine, as the exclusively ketogenic amino acids. Shown here is the estimated average requirement for each individual amino acid across the lifespan. As you can see, nine essential amino acids are shown here, because there's nine essential amino acids in adults. There's a few things I want to draw your attention to. First, I've colored this chart based on the approximate requirements of each amino acid. If you look at, for example, in adults, we require small amounts of tryptophan, only 4 milligrams per kilogram per day. On the other hand, we require relatively large amounts, 34 milligrams per kilogram per day of leucine. That's because, as we use amino acids to make our body's proteins, leucine is much more abundant in most of our body's proteins than tryptophan. Another thing I want to draw your attention to is if you look across the rows, let's take leucine as an example. 
you can see that infants require 65 milligrams per kilogram per day, whereas adults require about half as much, only 35 milligrams per kilogram per day. That's because infants are growing quite rapidly. They're very anabolic. They're making a lot of new protein, and therefore they have a more of a requirement on a per kilogram basis. Now, of course, adults are much bigger than infants, and so therefore at an absolute level, adults need much more than infants. But on a per kilogram of body weight, infants have the highest amino acid requirements. So here's some questions I want you to pause the video and think about. Why are there DRIs for only nine amino acids? Why are the DRIs so different from one another? And what is the sum of the amino acid requirements? And do you think that's the same or different than the total protein dietary recommended intake? Pause the video and take a minute to think about these questions. Here's some answers. Well, we only need the DRIs for the essential amino acids. For dispensable and conditionally essential amino acids, their intake is not relevant because we can make as much of those amino acids we need. We only need to worry about the dietary intake for the amino acids we can't make ourselves. These are the nine essential amino acids in adults. The amino acid requirements are different from one another because proteins have different requirements for those amino acids. Leucine is quite abundant in most proteins, whereas tryptophan is quite rare. Therefore, we need a lot more leucine than we knew of tryptophan. Finally, if we add up the total amino acid requirements, we come to somewhere around 100 milligrams per kilogram per day. That's much, much, much less than the protein requirement for the DRI. The difference here is the DRIs for amino acids are set to ensure that you're not deficient in any particular amino acid. But the protein requirement is bigger because we use protein not just to supply essential amino acids, but also to have calories. Another thing to remember is protein has to be broken down into amino acids. That makes protein a less accessible source of amino acids than free amino acids, which don't need to be digested, and they can be absorbed directly. In summary, each of the 20 amino acids can be classified as essential, dispensable, or conditionally essential. And this is based on the complexity of their biosynthesis. More complicated biosynthesis means that it generally becomes essential, and we've evolved not to bother with that complicated biochemistry. The synthesis of many amino acids is conditional on the availability of a particular precursor amino acid and the enzyme to take the precursor and convert it into that amino acid. Individual amino acids have different DRIs. There's nine different DRIs for nine different essential amino acids. We don't have DRIs for the dispensable or the conditionally essential amino acid because in general, we can make those ourselves. It's become quite common in recent years to be able to supplement with individual amino acids. You might have gone to the health store and seen leucine or arginine or lysine available to purchase. This is an interesting way to consume food, and this is different than consuming whole protein, which generally contains most of the amino acids. Understanding the biochemistry of these different amino acids helps us understand how those different supplements may work, and also what might happen if somebody was deficient in some particular biosynthetic or catabolic pathway.